تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم We're continuing the development of the uh, story of uh, Musa alayhi salam and we're discussing how he uh, grew up in the uh, house of Fir'aun and how that was actually a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he would see the ins and outs, uh, he would see the condition of Banu Israel, uh, he would also grow and live in the palace of Fir'aun so he would see how things are from the inside. So he would get a cohesive uh, view and understanding of the social fabric of both the Egyptians and the uh, you know leading and ruling class and also uh, understand the struggle of Banu Israel as well. So we continue by reciting the ayat together and taking them up insha'Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فلما أن أراد أن يبطش بالذي هو عدو لهما قال يا موسى قال يا موسى أتريد أن تقتلني كما قتلت نفسا بالأمس إن وجاء رجل من أقصى المدينة يسعى قال يا موسى قال يا موسى إن الملأ يأتمرون بك ليقتلوك فاخرج فاخرج إني لك من الناصحين فخرج منها خائن قال رب نجني من القوم الظالمين ولما توجه تلقاء مدين قال عسى ربي قال عسى ربي أن يهديني سواء السبيل ولما وجد عليه أمة من الناس يسكون ووجد من دونهم امرأتين تذودان قال ما خطبكما قال كانا نسقي حتى يصبر الرعاء وأبونا شيخ فسقى لهما ثم تولى إلى الظل فقال فقال رب إني لما أنزلت إلي من خير فقير. Here subhanallah the story continues or the ayat that we recited pick up from when Musa was going about in the street and he came across two people fighting one from his clan, one from his group, one from his family Ben Israel and another from the Egyptians and he actually gave help to the person from his family at the expense of the Egyptian and he pushed the Egyptian, he struck him and through that the Egyptian actually lost his life and now what happened is he's now feeling regretful he turned to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him because he's the most forgiving the most merciful but now Musa doesn't know what to do and he's a little bit shocked and so some of the narration say that he didn't actually return to the palace of Fir'aun and he decided to basically uh, stay again until the next day or until the next time he was going uh, and walking about he actually came across and he saw the same guy the same guy from his own people from Ben Israel now he's in a fight with a different guy now he's in a, in a, in a, in a 
he's in a fight with one of the other guys. And now he sees Musa coming, so he thinks Musa is going to help him again. So he tells him, Musa, come help me again. Musa, come help me again. I need your help. So look at subhanAllah how now Musa stops. He doesn't get involved immediately. He stops to think. He's looking and now he's stopping to think. And he's saying, subhanAllah, could it be يعني, now, before he was fighting and now he's fighting again? Maybe the problem is with him. And you see, sometimes we have people, subhanAllah, uh, they, they will actually, uh, you know, always, uh, you know, always uh, complain. I, I went to this place and it didn't work out, and I went to that place and it didn't work out, and I went to this place and the people gave me a hard time. People give me a hard time here and there. And they keep complaining about the hard time that they have with people, but they don't stop to think, could the problem be with me? Could the problem actually be with me? And so Musa, he started to think and he says, maybe the problem was with the guy himself. Maybe that's why I got into a fight yesterday and that's why I got into a fight this, this day as well. So Musa actually came to him and this time he's pushing the other guy away and now he wants to confront the guy who's uh, asking Musa for help. And then as soon as he did this, what does he say? What does the guy, Musa helped him yesterday, Musa helped him. He didn't know, Musa didn't know, but he helped him. And now the same guy who Musa helped is now turning to Musa and he's saying, At, Do you want to kill me too like you killed yesterday? Remember, not many witnesses knew, not many witnesses saw the event yesterday. But this time, now the same guy, the same guy who Musa helped yesterday, now this guy is actually publicizing and he's making a big deal out of it and he's saying, Musa, you want to kill me too? You want to kill me too like you killed yesterday? And the same guy, subhanAllah, who Musa helped, now he's ready to sell Musa out and he's ready to publicize that to the public, to the masses, to actually put Musa under the bus. And people, subhanAllah, hear, uh, they hear, the, uh, hear this and they hear, subhanAllah, Musa actually killed yesterday, so the news begins to circulate. You know, the, 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 the death from yesterday, nobody really knew, not, not many people, not many witnesses. But now with the second incident, people are now finding out and the news travels and a lot of the people find out and eventually subhanAllah the news would reach eventually to Fir'aun uh, and, and Fir'aun obviously would be very very disappointed. Can you imagine the shock on Fir'aun's uh, face when he realizes that the same guy who he was trying to basically uh, you know avoid uh, from, from being born, avoid, uh, avoid his problem and avoid him taking the power away from Ben Israel, now the same guy subhanAllah actually manages to live. Can you imagine Fir'aun being very very disappointed to, to, to realize that Musa could be or actually is the prophesied uh, young man that is going to grow and take and challenge uh, or take the power away from Fir'aun. So Fir'aun must have been very disappointed. And so subhanAllah, Musa now, فَأَصْبَحَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ خَائِفًا يتلقب. Musa basically uh, uh, becomes very, very wary and very, very scared, very, very afraid. And every time he's walking, he's walking through the city and he's careful. He's looking to the right, he's careful to the left, looking to the left, يتلقب. He's wondering, am I going to be uh, attacked? Am I going to be arrested? What is Fir'aun going to do? What's going to happen to me? Uh, the news is spreading very quickly. And what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him a, 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 a messenger, sends him somebody to help. And what happens? وَجَاءَ رَجُلُ مِنْ أَقَصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى A man came from the height of the, 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 the from far, uh, far away from within the city, from within the, uh, you know, the town. He comes to him and he's coming to advise. Him. Musa, news just reached me. The Pharaoh is sending all of his troops out. They're all looking for you. You need to get out and you need to run and you need to save uh, yourself. And so F Musa hears this and he gets very, very, uh, you know, again, uh, wary. He gets, uh, he gets worried. SubhanAllah, what am I going to do? There's no time to prepare. There's no time to take food. Imagine, remember, he's outside into walking. He can't go back to the city. He can't go back to, sorry, he can't go back to the palace and get his clothes, pack up, uh, get his, you know, uh, you know, food. And there's no time. So right away he starts leaving Egypt. He starts leaving Egypt on foot. And he would travel almost a thousand kilometers under, you know, somewhere between seven to eight days, around eight days within a week, he would travel out of Egypt into, uh, you know, through the desert and away from, uh, you know, the, 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 the vicinity of Egypt. And so he leaves and he goes to a city that is called Median. And when he goes there, subhanAllah, I want you to imagine, uh, just, just, just take a moment and pause. Imagine a man walking uh, in, in the desert. Eventually, after so walking for so long in the, in the heat, his clothes are full of sweat. Uh, he's walking fast. He's trying to avoid uh, you know, being caught by uh, Fir'aun. And Fir'aun is looking still within the vicinity. It did not occur to him to look outside of Egypt. But Musa has already has left, subhanAllah, and Allah saved him uh, through the advice that came from the man. But eventually, I want you to imagine here, Musa is walking. Uh, after a while, his shoe wears out. Now he's walking bare feet. Uh, his, his, his legs are getting, uh, you know, uh, subhanAllah, from, from the heat of the sand and from the cold of the night, his face is, is probably full of dust, his hair is full of dust, his, his, his body is, is worn out, his, his clothes are definitely worn out, and his shoes are gone. Now he's all, subhanAllah, by himself, walking, tired, fatigued, and he finally eventually makes it to Median. I want you to imagine after that distance, 
After that walk, imagine right now two people in your head. Imagine a person sitting on a throne with the king, being the king of the kings at the time, right? Human king of the kings. And now this person is enjoying food and luxury and there's people around, advisors, and he has access to the power of the power, all the power. And then a guy who's homeless, literally homeless, walking in the street with no support, no, no, nobody with him at all, bare feet, no clothes, uh, or just one, one, the clothes that he's wearing, no food, no provision at all. Who do you think in your mind, who do you think is successful? Who do you think is happy? Who do you think is actually uh, victorious? Who do you think is in a better state? A lot, of the, a lot of the time, subhanAllah, we say, well, the person who has everything in the world is probably in a better state. But look at Fir'aun, subhanAllah, in his palace and Musa walking homeless uh, away from uh, his home with no uh, support uh, ahead in his eyes at least, nothing waiting for him on the other side. SubhanAllah, look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that perhaps somebody who's homeless may be the recipient of the, gu the, gu the guidance of Allah and somebody who's enjoying their life in a, in a, in a, in a palace somewhere may be just being prepared for greater destruction. And SubhanAllah, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives and He takes, He guides and He also allows for others to be misguided out of their own uh, distortions, inclinations and of course wrongdoings. May Allah bless you and grant us success. We will come back and resume after the break, inshallah. <laughs> Muhammad, the most common name in the world. Why were so many parents interested and still are in interested? Welcome back. We are uh, discussing and continuing the discussion of the uh, sto story of uh, Musa alayhi salam. Uh, we uh, left off at the part where uh, Musa is now uh, finally uh, reached Median. And the uh, Median uh, city is obviously, or the town of Median, is, is still, uh, till this day, you can actually uh, find it and visit it. Uh, beautiful, beautiful place, but it's a thousand kilometers uh, away from uh, away from Egypt, and he had to actually walk uh, that with his uh, feet, subhanAllah. So imagine continuous walking day and, and, and night, perhaps, uh, resting only very, very uh, limited time by himself. And imagine this is his first time out of Egypt, and he's probably asking for directions along the way, but because he is strong, and he is very, very built, uh, and he is very, very uh, capable of taking care of himself, he eventually, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping him every step of the way, of course, he eventually makes it to Median. Now I want you to imagine the exhaustion. He's bare feet. He has very, very uh, dirty clothes, uh, clothes from the travel. It's the only, it's only uh, pair that he's got uh, or the only uh, clothing uh, that he's got. Uh, subhanAllah, so he's, he's, he looks, uh, he's, he looks uh, to, to say the least, not in the best form of presentability. He's not presentable uh, at all. But he comes to uh, Median, and as soon as he comes to Median, he uh, comes to uh, the, 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 the area where there's a well. So there's a well. And he finds uh, people around the well, the water of, of Median, and he finds uh, people gathered there, and everybody's trying to get water from the well. And of course, the society, it's a society where the strongest go first. So there's no, there's no clear order. Uh, not everybody has their turn. Obviously, the strongest guys are at the front. They're getting the water, and the weaker people are at the back. They're not able to get in. And so, subhanAllah, Musa sees that. And he's looking and he's analyzing. So Musa has now, what has Musa learned? Musa has learned to... To, to see and, and analyze the world around him and to subhanallah uh, uh, look, at, look at what's going on uh, in, in the environment around him. So he sees, he's looking around and he sees uh, two women, two women uh, amongst the men at the very back and they're waiting for their turn. And he notices from them signs of modesty. They're lowering their gaze, they're very respectful, but at the same time he's a little confused as to why uh, they are out uh, by themselves amongst the group of men and why they're at the back. And so uh, Musa alayhi salam, he comes in, in a very dignified manner. Imagine, and he offers, is everything okay? Ma khatibukuma, what is the matter? Are you okay? Is everything fine? And they tell him, uh, yes, everything is fine, but la nasqi hatta yusdir We're not going to go and, and, and intermingle with the rest of the men. We're going to wait calmly and, 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 and beautifully for our turn. And uh, the reason why we're here, don't get the wrong idea, wa abuna shaykhun kabir. Uh, because our father is very old, so he can't come out and do this by himself. So we have uh, basically to take care of our family, to take care of, uh, you know, basically we don't have any male siblings, so we are the ones that are coming and trying to basically get some water out. That's basically what they said in very short term. So imagine, they said very, very uh, short, concise sentences to avoid the conversation from uh, being carried on for too long. And here we see a model of, subhanAllah, uh, a model of, 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 of uh, respect and a model of, a model of readiness to help. You know, Musa could have said, man, I have my own problems. I am homeless. I have nothing. I have my own problems to worry about. But rather than worrying, worrying about himself, 
he imagine some of the narrations say he didn't even get water for himself. Can you imagine he's been traveling for so long? He didn't even get in get water for himself. He first stopped to help the two people out, to help the two women. So he of course he went through him because he's very strong. He managed to carry the water by, you know, the, the put the water by bring the water out by himself, even though it took a very strong group of men to do so. He did it by himself and then he brought the water and he gave it to he gave it to the uh, respectful uh, two women that came. And here we see subhanAllah a model of selflessness where the you know Musa is so yeah, he's he's literally at the height from human terms, uh, from success terms, he's at the height of difficulty and he's got everything to worry about. No clothes uh, to, to change into, no food to eat, uh, very limited uh, resources, uh, no home, uh, he's completely homeless, he doesn't know where to go, no family, uh, he just, and, and he's, he's not used to this lifestyle, he was raised in a palace, so imagine. But still, he did not worry about himself, his immediate worry was how can I help those two people out. Why are they out and what can I do for the sake of Allah? And here we see subhanAllah something very interesting. Some people will live in palaces and as soon as subhanAllah they, they, that, that is taken away from them, they will get depressed and angry and frustrated. They'll be like, oh my God, what am I doing out here? They'll, they'll gonna, they're, they're going to adopt this approach of, uh, they're not able to deal and, 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 and be fluid and, and uh, of course uh, you know, uh, ad adapt to the climate and adapt to the change. But Musa, we see that he was readily and uh, readily, easily uh, adaptable to the change. Why? Because his heart did not have the dunya. You know, even though he was raised in the palace, his heart was, uh, was full of love for people, full of uh, uh, you know, care for people. His heart was not consumed by worldly, materialistic things that are perishable. No, he was not affected by that. And so he was ready to help. And here we see subhanAllah the reward of someone who's readily uh, available to help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him everything. Look at what's going to happen. You know, those two women would eventually go back to their dad and say, you know, we've seen a man today that is obviously not from around here. He's very respectful, very handsome, very built, very strong. And he came and he actually helped us out. And he didn't do, like he didn't help us out with the intention of, you know, getting our, you know, as some people do nowadays, getting information about us. He was literally just doing it to help us for the sake of Allah. And he seems to be religious and he seems to be uh, very dignified and he seems to be very respectful. And he did this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for his sake alone expecting no reward from anybody else. He wasn't doing this for her sake or for you know, the, the sake of getting anything. And how do we know this? The ayah itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I'm in desperate need. Ya Allah, my Lord, I'm in desperate need of any good that you can send my way. Meaning that he was actually desperate and he was indeed in the most desperate of positions. But he wasn't looking for help from the people. He wasn't looking for reward from the people. He was looking for help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this goes to show you the, the level of trust that one can have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one should have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa put his full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He helped even though he was in a position where he received or he is in need of receiving help. And this goes to show us something important subhanAllah. Sometimes the people who help the most are the people who themselves are in the most uh, needy positions for help because they themselves know what it's like to have uh, a need or to have a want that is not fulfilled. And so Musa alayhi salam, he did not let his own problems worry him and bury him down and prevent him from helping others. No, no, by Allah, he did not let that happen. He went and he was ready to help. And this should be a model for all of us, my brother, my sister. You know, they used to say about the Prophet Muhammad sallam, that he was continuously overburdened with responsibility and things that would make him sad, but he was always, always smiling. He was always ready to help. Right? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was going through uh, grieving moments, one grieving moment after the other, but he was always continuously happy. And there are people that are affected by their problems, and then there are people, their problems are there, but they're able to deal with them in a much better way. And how, what determines that? The, the, the thing that determines that is the confidence that they have in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Whatever happens, they know that it's good. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi taught us that, you know, you know, if you look at the believer, you know, the, the, the way that the believer perceives the world around him or her, everything is khayr, everything is good, everything is a blessing from Allah. If something bad happens, alhamdulillah, it is a way for me to be uh, taught patience, it's a way for me to be purified. If something uh, bad happens, maybe it is actually good that is unfolding. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us that, subhanAllah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us that in the surah as well. And if something good happens, also they're calm. They say, Ya Allah, it can be taken away from me any moment. So Ya Allah, give me the ability to preserve the good that you've given me and to use it 
for your sake, subhanAllah, my brother, my sister. And here, Musa alayhi salam, in the way that he's dealing with the situation, in the way that he's developing now, we're seeing him slowly progress towards that which is better. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping him every step of the way. My brother, my sister, very, very important also to note that none of the other people in the town helped. They, they ignored the women completely. Uh, and, 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 and it was Musa who helped. He did not just say, well, if everybody's ignore them, ignoring them, I'm going to ignore them too. No, he was not the, one of the people that just went along with, with what was normal, uh, went along with the norm. No, he was always very careful and very cautious to step up and to help and to implement justice wherever it was. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us that. And the companions taught us that. You know, some of the companions, uh, they took the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi hadith and they added on it and, and, and they clarified it. Uh, Do not be a follower. لا تكون إن Never ever be a follower uh, in, in what context? Listen to this carefully. Not follower blindly. Do not, we can, we're all followers of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and we're very proud of it. But do not be a blind follower. When people do good, you do good. And when people do bad, you do bad. Rather, be a reason for good when good is happening. And a reason for the bad to end when bad is happening. So when there's good, you are a reason for that good. And when there's bad, you are a solution for that bad event or bad situation that is taking place. That is the attitude of a Muslim. And that is Musa salam's attitude as well in this whole story. As he's developing whatever injustice that he faces, subhanAllah, he is of course standing up against it and he's trying to bring it to an end. And also here, you will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give and bless the people who are ready to change others and ready to help others, Allah will give them more and more and more. And if you look at the whole story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from amongst them leaders that would guide to his path because of their patience. So the leaders have to be patient. And in Imam al-Shafi'i, he was once asked, O oh, Imam al-Shafi'i, is it better to be in a position, to be in a position where you are leading and you are responsible for people, or is it better to be in a situation where you are uh, going through a trial and going through a difficult moment and going through a little bit of uh, you know restriction uh, and and having to be patient with that? What is greater in the reward? Going through a difficult moment and receiving pa receiving a reward for the patience, or being in a position where you're helping people and receiving a reward for helping people and leading people and being in charge and managing people? And the Imam Shafi'i says, "Do you think anyone can reach a position?" where they are by the will of Allah, helping for the sake of Allah, except that they go first through periods of testing, right? Do you really expect anybody will be elevated to that level? Tests that will confirm that belief. It is very easy to sit over here, to sit where you're sitting and say, I believe, I believe, yeah, I'm a believer but then the belief is going to be seen and it's going to be uh, you know, manifested in the actions, in the decisions, in the choices that we make. You know, if Musa alayhi salam, he made a choice, a choice, who do I belong to? Where am I going to, where am I going to uh, you know, uh, have my loyalty to, to direct it towards, right? He made that choice. Am I going to help these women or am I not going to? All these choices that we make in life, they build up towards our development and they do either hinder or they help our progress towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from those who are continually and continuously progressing towards Him and who are always, always uh, finding ways to bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may He make us, make us from the pe people who, uh, when looking at uh, everything around us, even good, even bad, it always sends us back to, rem to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to never shake and to never uh, lose hope in Him. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khayra. May Allah reward you. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون